And that was the President of the United States with Cleveland Rocks. And Cleveland is rocking right now. The Cleveland Indians have won an, a 21 games in a row. <clears throat> that breaks the American League record held by the 2002 Oakland Athletics. That team was featured in the movie Moneyball and the book Moneyball. But, um, <clears throat> let's talk about some crazy statistics, um, from this, about the streak. As I said earlier, these 21 tw wins tie, um, both the Bills score and GCC from this last Sunday and GCC score, from, the GCC men's score from last night. But, um, they, the Indians have won 20, have won more games these last three weeks than the Browns have since 2011. They have only trailed four innings in this streak. Um, I guess they have they have four or five wins away from um, the the official record, which is believed is held by the 1906. Uh, I believe it's held by the 1906 San Francisco Giants, whatever right now, but um, 1916 New York Giants. That's 26 wins in a row, so it's pretty crazy. Um, his his play is his most crazy thing, and yet even after all that winning, the Indians' record still masks a much better ball club underneath. 21 wins is going to be better than you think. Back in early July, we know that Cleveland's then mediocre record belied the team's stellar unaligned stats. It included its outstanding run differential and expected record for base runs. At the time, the Indians were struggling to fend off the upstart Minnesota Twins and Kansas City Royals in the AL Central, despite superior metrics. Common sense says Cleveland's record was bound to catch up with the stats eventually. But in a sport like baseball, you never know. By now, the Indians have erased all doubt about the stand within division as they lead the Twins, who are themselves in, clinging on to the ALL's final wildcard spot by 14 games. But according to BaseRunners.com, the Cleveland should still have more wins than they do. In fact, the Tribe's six-win shortfall between their predicted and actual records is the second biggest such margin in, in baseball behind the Yankees, who should have nine more wins. The same scores for Cleveland's record as predicted by run differential. They fall in six wins short in that department. In other words, as good as the Indians may have been, they've also drawn been incredibly unlucky. This is akin to the person who drew an ordinary straight flush who serves a royal flush. Which brings back to the 2002 Oakland Athletics squad from Moneyball. Um, ironically enough, for a team deeply associated with the spread of advanced metrics across baseball, the team stats really couldn't really hold a candle to this year's Indians. The 2002 A's ranked fourth in Major League Baseball with .598. Of course, .598 base run predicted winning percentage, and also came in fourth with 49.7 total wins above replacement. The 2017 Indians, meanwhile, lead the lead the league in both base runs and winning percentage. Cleveland's .654 clip is well clear of the second-ranked LA Dodgers. On, uh, on offense, the two clubs were roughly equivalent. Oakland ranked fourth in the American League and weighted runs created plus, while Cleveland currently ranks second with an identical 106. But in terms of pitching and defense, the Tribe dominated. That easily they easily lead the 2017 AL in earned runs average and field and independent pitching and third fan graphs. Defensive value and metric. That's why the Indians have already allowed 217 fewer runs than average team would only in the same park. Though 145 games by comparison, Oakland only allowed 115 fewer runs than average. These are all reasons to think that this year's Indians could fare well in the postseason than money, the money ball athletics, who seem to end with a heartbreaking five-game efficient series loss to the Twins. The Indians had their own share of heartbreak last year, but they'll be back again and even better than before. The wish we could help validate what has always been a scary tale to the team underneath, waiting to break out. So it's going to be interesting play playoffs, but um, I think the New York Yankees have the right formula to beat them in October. It might be viewed as a new line of thinking, 
But it really dates back to the, to the least, uh, to at least the start of the Yankees dynasty. The in the Indian the, the Indians budgets borrowed the formula last fall with the uh, assist from Yankee general manager Brian Cashman. Cashman turned the Indians into one of the most fearsome teams in the American League when he traded the lights out reliever Andrew Miller for a, a haul of young prospects 14 months ago. It worked out for the Indians, who deployed Miller as if he were a lefty version of the mid 1990s Mario Rivera. The Indians used Miller in multiple innings per game as a nearly unstoppable bullpen weapon and just fell short of a World Series title. It's now a year later, and the next month the Yankees could be the team that ruins the tribe's dreams by using the old Rivera formula. Um, it's tw 21 straight wins, but in October, everyone is 0-0. Zero zero. This win streak means nothing if the Indians don't win the World Series. Um, the Yankees will probably make the playoffs while the Indians a wild card team if they take care of Minnesota next week in the Bronx. The Yankees will likely make it inevitable, make it inevitable as they have home field advantage in the wild card game. The wild card game is like a game seven. Anything can happen. The Yankees make it to if the Yankees make it to an AL division series against the Indians, they have two very standard roles to handle and Rivera uh, to handle the Rivera slash Miller role. With the days off after every two games, Girardi will turn to David Robertson and emerge with Chad Green for multiple innings and multiple games, so they can handle the ball to Dylan Bertanzas and Alex Chapman late. In essence, even if the Yankees have to use Ace Lewis Severo to get past the wild card game, they had a chance to get against the Indians because the, though the Yankees will be weaker in start games, they could go mano a mano in the middle of a late innings to the days to allow relievers to they could be used often. The race, the Yankees race series, is a perfect example of how Girardi will go about his postseason business. The Yankees have won two or three games, and each of the purposes and Green serves as a bridge to the end of the game. On Monday, it was Joe Girardi who lifted Stacey Sebastian at the four and a half third inning played, and went to Robinson, who was being paid twelve million dollars this season for his past work as a closer in the fifth inning. Robinson fired a clean two and two thirds innings to, to, for a record to the record win. Allow one hit for striking out four. He'll be half of the Yankees' version of Miller time. It's interesting that Robinson can be a role player because the Yankees choose Miller over Robinson in the winter of 2014 15. In large part, the Yankees signed Miller rather than re sign Robinson because they gained a first round pick by letting Robinson go and didn't lose one with Miller. The, the Bombers acquired Green for the Tigers in a trade for Justin Wilson a winter, a winter later. Green then turned to an early the Yankees to the best reliever. He was lights out again Wednesday, entering the P. Jim Mayer Garcia, which was who was one hour away from qualifying the fifth inning. Girardi. Green faces five um batters and retired them all. And then Girardi gave the ball to Tommy Kale, another piece of the pen, and then to the Bersantis. Bersantis, he was shaky for two outs, so Girardi, Joe Girardi did ask Chapman to record a four-out save. It was a little bit uneven, though. Chapman got to get the job done for his 20 career save. This is on hand will play in October. As it stands now, the Yankees are able to get through the wild card game. They would face the Indians. No one here predicted the Yankees to beat Cleveland. But with Green Robinson coming to during the middle of the game, they have more than they have a better chance than people think. So I guess the Bruce, speaking of money ball, have these small market teams broken through? Because that's been the big complaint we've heard for years. The Yankees buying championships and the Indians um, and mar smaller markets like the Indians and the A's not being able to keep their players. That's why the money ball thing has started. So how has it worked? It's been over 15 years since that worked. Since it, the Oakland used it. But um, the Oakland Athletics have kind of fallen off. They've been kind of hit and miss. They had a great season a couple of years ago. But they've been unable, unable to contain it. They they won they won the AL West in 2012 2013 which is called Moneyball two, only lose to the LDS to the Tigers for respective years. They got to the wild card game against the Royals, and then they just fell apart going 68 94 and 69 93. The New York Yankees um have they kind of fallen off the edge. They have not scored a playoff run since 2012. Well, they did get make the playoffs in 2015, but they get swept. But they, but they're still, but they, uh, but they have not had a losing season since 1992. And with Aaron Judge, Didi Gregorius, and the rest of that young baby aching up, that streak is not going to end anytime soon. 
So, has Major League Baseball done a better job even in the playing field? Is the Are we going to stop hearing people complain about the Yankees buying championships? Hit me up on Twitter at JRed Show for your thoughts on that. Um, I'm going to switch over to the NASCAR. Um, and Casey Kane might be jumping in the jump to IndyCar. But let's look at those options. Casey Kane tweeted about enjoying the Smithfield bacon. Some fans didn't know how to take that statement sentiment. So was he throwing his hat in for the number 10 Stuart Haas Racing Ford? Or was he expressing his delight for the noshing on the breakfast sample table? Kane had a great deal in 2018 was simply throwing us the support for one of Ascar's brands. What um in August, a little more than a week after Kane won the Brickyard 400, Hendrick Motorsports announced Kane's release from his contract. The victory provided Kane the opportunity to race in the playoffs and a surge of the disappointment of what otherwise has been an unremarkable season. Kane doesn't believe it being a lame duck will start his opportunity in the next 10 races. As recently as last week, Kane was considering a combination schedule, which could include a variety of race options between sprint cars and NASCAR in between. Kane, who's 37, came to NASCAR through an open wheel ranks. He hasn't dismissed racing in the Indianapolis 500 someday. However, he doesn't want to just fill a seat. Kane doesn't believe he'll have, net to, sp have to bring his sponsorship to the table to the race next season. He said the number 95 Levain family racing ride is a double option, but he's also talked to, R to Richard Childress racing with the number 27 Chevy. Kane recently toured his, the Welcome North Carolina based race shop that two of his former managers, Sammy Johns and Eric Warren, ca call home. However, the RCR seat would require a sponsorship to close the deal. What's for certain for Kane will not be will, is will not sign in front of a team that's for a sheer purpose to fill his seat. For the last several seasons, he's come accustomed to what feels like around the 15th. Um, I think he just do it. He should race it in IndyCar. At least make a partial schedule just only in overalls like Ed Carpenter does. Ed is a team owner who can feel the car for himself whenever he wants. An over overly schedule is possible, but with who and, and what money is an important question to be asking. So, do you think Casey Kane should make the jump to IndyCar? I personally do. I would like to see him make the jump. Hit, hit me up on Twitter at JRed Show. How about this? Um, If, uh, if something doesn't come to NASCAR kind of for NASCAR, Keynes would admit, admit he, would, he wouldn't mind becoming a journeyman race next season. A part-timer in NASCAR and a part-timer in Indy for Car 500. He would not be the first person to do the double duty. Um, I want to go back to 1994. Um, oh, sh I, had this, I had this on my Wikipedia page about um, double duty in racing. Anyhow, should, should Casey Kane make the jump to IndyCar? Um, a double duty is also referred to the Indy Charlotte Double or Memorial Day Double, the first to accomplishment in automobile racing, which, which drivers complete in both the Coca-Cola 600 and the Indianapolis 500 on the same day. This was attempted by John Adriel on March 29, 1994, and Tony St in 2001, Tony Stewart became the first and only driver to take to successfully complete all 1,000 miles rounds of the same race. Um... This is all on Memorial Day weekend, so I think Casey Kane should definitely go for it. I think he has the talent to win both races. But what are your thoughts? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show for your thoughts. Anyhow, we'll be getting back into the music. Coming up next is Cemetery is um Chicago with the Devil Went Where's Prada. So you can keep off at 9.7 the music FM.